Let's kick off today with a little bit of a different start. I'm gonna have you guys do a warm up problem, just to kind of draw together the things we've done with graphs so far. Uh, and so the problem is given an undirected graph, your job is to come up with an algorithm that determines whether or not it has cycles. So for this graph, for example, your algorithm should return true because there is a cycle here. And you're allowed to use any data structure algorithm from the course so far, your choice. Um, and so pause me and then I'll spoil it uh, as soon as you're ready. I'll wait. Okay. Uh, so the most popular solution that came up during live lecture was to do depth first search from some arbitrary vertex, let's say zero. Uh, and so for example, uh, we would go zero, uh, one, three, six, four, five. And so something interesting happens if there's a cycle, which is that we'll see a vertex which has already been marked. Okay? So basically you'll run DFS uh, and you'll continue to go until you see a vertex which has already been marked. And that means there's a cycle because that means someone else was there before you. And then there's one little caveat, which is remember that the way we wrote the DFS algorithm a few lectures ago is that if we start at vertex zero, then go to one, when we run the DFS of one, we're gonna look back at zero and see that it's marked already. Uh, so in that case, this is not a cycle in an undirected graph. And so we'll make a uh, special note that will ignore uh, the place we just came from. So we'll have to modify the DFS call. Maybe we'll add an extra parameter that says where you came from. And we'll ignore checking that one for marked because there's no need to, uh, and that's not a cycle. Okay. Uh, so this algorithm works, and its runtime, because it's DFS, is V plus E. Uh, and so if you want to understand exactly why it's V plus E, there are some study guide problems uh, that will reinforce this because it's just a regular old DFS. Um, and if you really want to convince yourself this algorithm works, I would recommend trying it out on a few graphs and trying to find that kernel of uh, inspiration that comes from such uh, exercises. Okay, so that's one approach. Uh, another approach, which I also like, uh, is a little easier to understand, I think, or a little easier to to convince yourself works, a little harder to come up with, uh, and that's to use a weighted quick union uh, object. So I won't spoil it yet in case you wanna try and come up with it. Okay, so the spoiler is uh, that we will use a, say, weighted quick union UF object, or whatever, it doesn't matter, just any kind of disjoint sets implementation. And so what you'll do is you'll just iterate through every edge in the graph. And for each edge, you'll see if the two vertices uh, that that edge connects, you'll see if they're connected already. If they're not, you'll union them. So for example, if I was running the algorithm, maybe the first edge I do is this one. And we'll say, is four and six connected? No, so union four, six, okay? Now we're not changing anything about the graph then. We're actually creating a separate object, a weighted quick union object that we're using for bookkeeping purposes, okay? Uh, so then maybe we do this edge next and we say, are one and three connected yet? No, so then we'll connect them in our weighted quick union object. They're connected in the graph, of course, but in the weighted quick union, they're not. Okay, and so we'll keep going. And so this algorithm will keep uh, working our way through the graph. Uh, and if at any point we happen to see two edges, so maybe we do this edge, then this edge, uh, at some point we'll get to this edge and we'll say our five and six connected. Uh, and the weighted quick union, since we've already union four and five and four and six, uh, this will be connected, okay? Uh, and so in that case, what we'll do is union, or sorry, in that case, we'll see that it's already connected. And so we'll just return, yes, there is a cycle and we're done. Now this algorithm has runtime uh, V plus E log star V. Uh, as long as we use path compression, and that's big O in this case, as opposed to big theta. Uh, and why is it this? Well, go back and look at lecture 20. We said that the runtime of weighted quick union with path compression was n plus m log star n, where n is the number of items and m is the number of operations. Uh, here, you know, we did that same thing. There's v items and e operations. So this is our runtime. And the reason it's big O and not big theta uh, is that in the worst case, Actually, this algorithm runs slightly faster than this. A uh, log star is actually a bit of an overestimate, so I'm using big O instead. Uh, and if we wanted to, if you wanted to get real deep 170 style, uh, we also have that Ackerman function where we could make this bound even tighter, uh, but log star is a little easier to understand, and so I've stuck with uh, big O log star. Uh, so that's our warm up problem for the day. And this will all come back together whenever we talk about our new topic of the day, namely, minimum spanning trees.